tractor. 6 a.m. I'm going to try to knock out a video before I got to get to work today. Come on into the barn. Today, I want to record some drums using three main ingredients. Porta Studio 424 by Tascam. I'm going to use this vintage DBX 118 compressor, which is like the 160A, I think it's called, which is a pretty famous compressor. You can find these for cheap online. I'm going to use this phaser also because one of my subscribers said, hey, why don't you use phaser on drums? I'm like, that's a really good idea. So on the kick, we have the RE20, SM57 on the hi-hat, and the SM50 on the snare. I might pull the SM50 off the snare, like do a side snare mic thing. We'll see. And for the room mic overhead, I'm going to use this MXL Revelation 2. It is a tube mic, and the reason I'm using this microphone is two reasons. It's really bright, which is good for tape, and it has its own power. Most Porta Studios don't have their own phantom power, so here we go. The reason I'm using a cassette tape today, a Porta Studio cassette deck, is most people have access to something like this, or you can buy it for like 200. You can find these things cheap. And uh, I demonstrated in a different video how you can use the Porta Studio for parallel compression. You don't even need to record the tape. You can still use, you can take advantage of the cheap sounding preamps on these and go straight to your DAW and in fact you don't even need a, a Porta Studio to do that you could use like a cheap mixer so what we're doing is my plan is to use the effects send on this guy to get all these effects on here the, the compressor and the phaser so let's let's go to the next stage for the cassette tape I'm using it is a XL2 position high 90 I guess it's kind of long I think you get better fidelity if you use a, a shorter tape but we don't give a crap Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get into it on this video, but there's something I got to check on the 424 because this is sounding a lot cleaner. 246 is sounding a lot cleaner. So it's a smorgasbord of According to the Porta Studio, got the DBX there, got the phaser pedal there. This is just the basic vibe of what's going on over here. You might need to get yourself a couple of these to use guitar pedals with your Porta Studio or your 4-track. It's like a MXL to a quarter inch cable. kind of fun you can hear the uh, DBX engaging turn this up I've just found in my own experience that there's a huge difference between getting the levels, the record levels, a little bit off and just right. Like when you're overloading, it sounds terrible. When you're not hitting it hard enough, there's just so much noise. Yeah, so just getting that sweet spot is like so important. You know, getting your EQ just right. Like I, I try to, you know, do certain things before I record to get, uh, to just maximize the sound of this tape, which cassette is tough. Let's get it into the box now. Now we're taking all this stuff out of here. We're gonna dump four tapes outs and for that we need RCA to quarter inch so when tape out is going nothing has an effect anymore you pretty much can't do anything it's just going straight from tape to the machine the reason I'm going through the preamps is because I'm too lazy to stick it through the back and also I want to be careful of overloading it'll tell me if something overloads by indicating red so here's what I did here's how the whole thing was routed kick snare room and then the effect return so what i did was the phaser was just line in so the phaser was printed and then everything was sent to the uh, dbx compressor right there the 118 which was set to that just whenever like like a, a really loud sound came in it would engage it wasn't always on it was kind of like doosh, doosh. and then it, that came back to channel four and everything was sent there, not just one uh, just one mic, everything. Therefore, if, if you're recording to tape and you're doing like a three mic thing, you can blend in the amount of that 
of that compressed sound you want. And what, what when you mix like dry sounds with a compressed sound, you get parallel compression. Since I'm going back into the box, I can then manipulate these things individually. But what I'm going to have is kick, snare, room, and then that parallel compression with an actual analog compressor. And then uh, we'll take it from there. As you can see right there, we got kick, snare, room, and then that parallel compression. Let's use the old Casio 210 sound tone bank. I'm going to run this into the Warm Audio MPX. I don't need that much. That's a lot. I don't think I need tape saturation. High gain. A bit more drive. <laughs> fucked up. I already fucked up. Now I'm really driving the MPX. This sounds cool. So this Casio probably worth nothing. Somebody gave it to me. And I've rarely used it, but going into the tape saturation thing on the uh, Warmati MPX. It sounds extreme out of the mix, but in the mix, I think it's going to sound kind of cool. Now I'm going to master this track, and I'm going to use Mixia by DistroKid. And all you got to do is just drag it in there. So let's bounce this down. We're currently using AI to write our emails, vacuum our carpets, watch our children while we sleep. Why wouldn't we use AI to master our songs? Let's take a listen. Boom. Here we are on the website. It's as simple as that. Drag it in. Wow. Something's happening. The robots are doing stuff. Right. You can just mess with the EQ and the intensity. You don't want a whole bunch of options. Just set it and forget it. Then set it and forget it. It sounds pretty good. And I'm not just saying that. I've used AI mastering for years, so I'm not against that. AI mastering sounds very good. Hey, AI mastering sounds very good. So it's $99 a year for unlimited mastering. And if you use my link below, you will get 7% off. Check out Mixia by DistroKid. It's pretty cool for all your mastering needs. It really cuts the fat. Yeah, so it's kind of fun to go down the rabbit hole. We use the Casio DBX, we use the Warm Audio Phaser, the MXL Revelation 2, which people say is too bright, but I think it's not bright enough. If you enjoy analog stuff and vintage stuff, you'll probably enjoy this video here or this video here.